Hello, I'm Chris Menard. This is a continuation of my series on personal investment. I'm still discussing compound interest. So in this video, I'm going to compare compound interest versus simple interest. Plus, I'm going to so show Microsoft Excel's future value function. So here is our topic list. I'm going to go ahead and start off with future value, but I'm going to base it on a one-time investment of $10,000, and you never put any more money in there. And in case you're wondering, over 25 years, if you were to get 10%, you'd be looking at, with compound interest, $108,000 versus simple interest, $35,000. So, which one would you rather have? Obviously, the 108,000. So, here's the future value function. Example one, I'm putting up $10,000. Uh, you got it from an inheritance. You saved it. It doesn't matter. Your periodic investment is going to be zero. I'm making the interest rate 10% for 25 years. And the compound frequency is one. So I'm, I want to do the future value function equals FV. There are five arguments. Three are required, but I'm going to end up using in this video, I'll end up using all five at some point. The interest rate is 10%. In this example, I don't have to do it, but I'm going to go ahead and make it official. I would divide that by the compounding frequency. So if you, if it was compounded monthly, you would divide by 12, and that'd be the number 12 in cell B5. Comma, NPER is the term, that is gonna be B4 times the compounding frequency. Again, it's just gonna be 25 in this example. Comma, payment. How much money are you periodically putting in here? So this would be if you're investing monthly or weekly or um, annually, but I'm not, I'm just putting in the $10,000 initially and I'm never making another payment. But if I were to make payments, I would show them as negative because it's money out of my pocket. So I would do negative B2 comma, how much money did you invest? Negative B1. So I'm using one of the optional arguments, the PV function of this. I am done. Type in this example doesn't matter. There's my 108,347. With simple interest, I would simply get $1,000 because 10,000 times 10% 10 is $1,000 every year in interest for 25 years, so 1,000 times 25 is 25,000, plus the 10,000 is the 35,000. So that's the big difference right there. That is why 73,000, that's why compounding is so cool. I'm gonna change this to explain compound interest. I'm gonna change the term from 25 years to four years. I get 14,641. An easy formula over here, which I've already done. I got year one, year two, year three, year four. I know I'll put in $10,000 times one plus that interest rate, I'm gonna make that absolute reference with the F4 key. There's my 11,000, 14,641. What I wanna point out is year one, I have $1,000 in interest. But here's the compounding. So year one, compounding and simple for me is the same. It'll be $1,000. But year two with simple, I would still have $1,000 with simple, but with compounding, I get interest on the interest. So it's $1,100. I'm gonna auto fill that down. 
So just to show this real quick over here, let me get rid of all this. <clears throat> so here's how I would explain compound interest to somebody. I put in $10,000, I'm getting 10%. So in year one, there's my $1,000. Matches right there and sell H4. Year two, I'm still getting the simple interest part. So again, 10% of $10,000 is $1,000. But I'm also, compound interest, I'm also getting 10% of the thousand from year one should be a hundred dollars. I'm gonna go total these up over here just to keep up with this. They should match up. One thousand matches one thousand. Eleven hundred matches eleven hundred. So year three was simple. I would only have a thousand dollars. But with compound, I'm gonna get. I'm going to do the math in my head so you don't have to sit here and watch me type functions. So I get that no matter what. But I'm also getting 10% of this 1,000, which is 100. I'm getting 10% of year two 1,000, which is 100. And then I'm getting 10% of that 100. 100 times 10% is 10 bucks. Pull that down. So year two, $1,210 in interest. Sorry, year three, $1,210, $1,210. I'm only going out year four, but watch, watch this. There's my simple. So I'm getting 10% of year one, 1,000. 10% of year two, 10% of year three. But then I'm getting 10% of year two's 100. This is kind of cool. There's 10 bucks. 10% of year three, that 100. The next 100 next to it in cell E12. And then 10% of 10 bucks, which is cell F12. 10% of 10 is $1. Pull down. 1331 in interest for year four. 1331. So simple interest in this example would have given me $14,000, but compound interest totals up to 14641 which is right over here that I proved with the future value function and is right here that I just did the math on. And again, you're saying, well, that doesn't sound like a whole lot. Well, it's only been four years. Remember running out 25 years, would you rather have 108,000 or would you rather have 35,000? 108,000 is the answer. Now, one last example on this. Oh, by the way, so future value, one time with money, show compounding, I just did that. Uh, show the calculator. Let me go ahead and knock that out. If you want to, if you don't have Excel for some reason, you can always get Excel online. But there's a calculator I found it called Smart Asset. Let me go ahead and pull it up. I should get the exact same answer here. Here we go. Ten thousand dollars. Additional contributions are zero. Annually, 10%, 25 years, 108,347. I'll put a link to this calculator. I'm not affiliated with these people, but the calculator definitely works. Last example on future value. So in this example, I'm still putting in the $10,000 initial amount. But every period, and I'm just going to make this annual again, I'm going to put in $2,500. Watch this. So I have $354,000 is my future value down below. And if you want to see this with the calculator, $2,500. 
354, 215, 354, 215. Here's where it's going to get just a little bit off, and I'll explain why it's off. I'm going to be realistic about this. Let's say you put in the initial amount. I don't care whether it's $10,000 or not, but I'll keep it at $10,000. But let's say you get paid weekly or monthly, because you can change the frequency here, because most likely you're not going to put in $2,500 annually. So there's monthly, and there's weekly, and there's getting paid every two weeks bi-weekly. I'm going to make this monthly. So let's say every month you throw another $1,000 at it every month. Let's say, one more time, let's say you're throwing, yeah, $1,000 a month works. So $1,000 a month, there is your number right there. And I've got it as monthly. When I put in the $1,000 a month, I will change that to 12 because now I'm not doing it annually, I'm doing it monthly. 1447403, I've got the exact same number right now, so it is matching. But just in case it was not matching, that is where you get into the last argument here. Are you putting that money in at the end of the period or are you putting it in at the beginning of the period? Again, in this example, it's not going to matter. But if I was to put it in at the beginning, I would actually get a little more money. But most likely you're putting it in when you get paid. So I'm going to leave it as zero right now. But that's the zero versus one. Anyway, there is an investment calculator. There is your future value function explained. If you want this spreadsheet, I will put it in the description. And hopefully now you understand that compound interest is the way to go. Invest early. Feel free to look at my videos about putting in $2,000 when you're 19 for eight years and never putting any more money in. You'll have more money than if you put in $2,000 later in life for 39 years. Thank you for your time. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.